Welcome to America Reads Fun Learning Activities. We are college students who create learning activities for kids. Our fun activities are focused on reading, writing, and math. Thank you for joining us to learn today. Today, we have myself, Raymond Armijo, who will cover our topic for today, which will be categories of two-dimensional figures. And so today, we'll be looking at figures and their properties to find out what categories they will fall under. To do this, we're going to be looking at the properties of quadrilaterals, and some of those properties include the parallel sides of the figure, the number of right angles in the figure, the opposite side angles of the figure, and the side lengths of the figure. These are just some of the factors we're going to be looking at today. And so, now that we have that, I want you to go ahead and take a look at this hierarchy chart, and then copy it down into your notebook or on a piece of paper. So go ahead and pause the video, copy it down, and then when you're ready, unpause it and we will get started. Alrighty, now that you've got it copied down, let's go ahead and take and let's get started and take a look at our first example. Alrighty, here's our first example. Now, you may know what the shape is, but don't worry about that right now. We're going to be looking at the properties of the shape first. And so to do that, we're going to take it step by step and look at each of the figures. So the first thing is we're going to answer is, does this figure have four sides? Yes, it does. So that means a quadrilateral. And we're also going to look at the right angles. This shape has four right angles, which is a good property to have because it makes it fit into a lot of different categories in the quadrilateral family. So, we already know that this is a quadrilateral. That's the first category we can put it in. So, now that we know that, we can move on to step number two and look at the parallel sides of the shape. This shape will have two sets of parallel sides because each sides are parallel. The ones on top and bottom and the left and right. And with that, we can put this in the category of the parallelogram because parallelograms have two sets of parallel sides. And it also takes it out of the trapezoid and the kite category because those don't work. And so, now let's take a look at the opposite angles. This shape has four equal angles, so that means that the opposite angles are already equal to each other. And so, what that will mean is that we can put this figure under the rectangle category. And that may look like it's the end of it, but no it isn't. We can go even further. So let's take a look at our side lengths. This shape has four equal side lengths. All of the sides are equal. And so you know what else that can make us put it in? That means we can put it in the rhombus category as well, because a rhombus has four equal sides. And now, from all this different information that we've collected, we can finally put this figure into a category. By now, you should have figured out that this figure is in fact a square. And so, if you look at a square on the hierarchy chart, and what we've already known, we can put this into the quadrilateral category, the parallelogram category, rhombus category, and the rectangle category. It's a it's under all the categories in the shape, except kite and tra trapezoid. Now isn't that interesting? Great work! You guys did awesome. Now, let's take a look at another example. Alright, let's get started. So, like last time, we're going to do the same first step. So, does this shape, in fact, have four sides? And the answer to that question is yes it does because this does have four sides. So knowing that, we can already put it into our first category which based off the hierarchy chart is the quadrilateral category. Pretty simple right? We're going to do the same process we did last time for this shape. So. Let's move on to step number two and look at the parallel sides of the figure. This figure 
It doesn't have all sides parallel, but it has one set of parallel sides, that being the top and bottom of it. Those sides are parallel because they're never going to touch each other. So, using that, we can put it in the trapezoid category, which takes it out of the kite category and the parallelogram category, based off of the one set of parallel sides. And let's look at the opposite angles of this shape. Now the opposite angles are not equal, but there are two sets of equal angles, which is a factor of an isosceles trapezoid, which we can put, which needs another factor, but we can already start to realize that this may be an isosceles trapezoid. We just need to confirm. So let's look at the side lengths. So, obviously the top and bottom are different. But let's look at the left and right sides. Those two sides are equal. So, what does that mean? The two sides are equal, and the we have two sets of equal angles. So in fact, this is an isosceles trapezoid, and we can put it in that category. Pretty cool, right? So now, step number five, we can put it in all the categories we know that it's already in. So, in fact, this is an isosceles trapezoid, as we picked up. But, we can fit this isosceles trapezoid, based off the hierarchy chart, into the quadrilateral trapezoid and isosceles trapezoid categories. Not too bad, right? You guys did awesome today. Great work, once again. Alright, so today, we talked about the properties of the two-dimensional quadrilaterals and what different categories of that hierarchy they fall into, you know? There are many different categories for each different types of shape, but focused for today, we focused on the categories of two-dimensional shapes and the quadrilaterals, but every two-dimensional shape and three-dimensional shape has this, but that's for a later date. So, now that we've done some sample problems, I want you to take a look at these shapes on the screen and do them on your own. So pause the video and then just look at the properties, categories, and itself. So go ahead and work on that on your own. Alright, you guys did awesome today and I'd like to thank you for learning with us today. We hope that you come back and learn some more.